D'Angelo Russell, and Kyrie Irving. Potentially, we'll switch teams. They won't be D'Angelo going to the Celtics. Really, it'll be him going to the Lakers. Because right now, there's news of the Lakers making a strong case for getting D'Angelo Russell back to the Lakers again. And that all comes from the Nets getting Kyrie, potentially, or being the highest bidder for Kyrie. And the news is that if they get Kyrie, they're going to let go of D'Angelo Russell because they don't believe it'll be a good fit. Now, I think it's a mistake. I, I've said it before. I think it's a mistake for not only both teams, not only for both teams. For, for the Lakers, it's like a bit more shaky of a mistake. It's not like a really bad mistake. It's, you know, it has maybe like one pro and a whole bunch of cons for the Brooklyn Nets getting Kyrie Irving. I can't think of one pro that comes from it. I really can't. I just think of a whole bunch of cons. But let me start with the Nets. Why is it bad for the Nets to let go of D'Angelo Russell and to get Kyrie Irving in return? Now, we all agree that Kyrie Irving, at this point in his career, is better than D'Angelo Russell. But guess what? You can tell that to the to the Houston Rockets all you want. Analytics does not make a team good. It does not. Chemistry, fit, personality, bonding, all that stuff makes a team good. Combined with talent and skill. But when you have all this talent and no team chemistry, you're going to lose. I would rather have a lot of team chemistry and, you know, some talent, and I'll win a lot more games than I would with a whole bunch of talent and little to no chemistry. Yes, talent can win some games, but it won't win every single game. And it won't get you where you need to go. Now, for the Nets, I believe that what they should do is just keep D'Angelo Russell. Just keep him. You can grow that team full of young players. You got Spencer Dinwiddie, Karis LeVert, D'Angelo Russell. You got Joe Harris, who's on more of the veteran side. But still, you got a whole bunch of young players. You got Jared Allen, too. And like I said, you want that team chemistry. You saw them dancing on the sidelines every single time someone scored a basket. You want to build that team team chemistry. You want them all to grow together. You look at all the teams that have won championships in the past. Most recently, you look at the Warriors. They're all around the same age group. They're all around the same age group because you want them all to grow at the same time. You don't want it to be stagnated. One person exiting their prime, one person entering. You want them both entering their prime at the same time so that you get maximum production. Kobe and Shaq both entering their primes around the same time that they were in together. MJ and Scotty, that too. Now the LeBron and... D-Wade and Chris Bosh was a bit more complicated because it was like, you don't really know if D-Wade was exiting his prime, but he was still there. He was still somewhat in his prime. At least for the first few years, he was still in his prime. And they won championships like that. But that's how I think that the Nets should go about it. They should keep that team together, let them grow together, and then additionally, we all know that Kyrie Irving is not a leader for a playoff team. You just look at what, at, at what he did for the Boston Celtics. That, that was not a playoff team. They made the playoffs in the East, yeah. The Nets are also in the East. But let's be honest. If he goes to the Nets, he'll destroy it. It's a bad look for Kyrie, too. Because, once again, the, the, the narrative's going to be, look, you're not a leader. You, you need a LeBron to save your butt in Cleveland. You really needed him. You may have hit the biggest shot, but you really needed LeBron because you can't even do anything. You may make the playoffs, but you're bouncing around from team to team like a pinball machine. And the, narrative, and the narrative will be, he would fail again. And he's not a leader. And ultimately, even if KD did come, which would be great for the Nets, the narrative would, would still hurt Kyrie because I'm telling you, even if KD did come, they would still stuck for that first year. It would definitely enhance KD's legacy, but it would hurt Kyrie's legacy. Because it'd be, once again, oh, you needed that you needed that guy to 
come and save you because you couldn't do it. Because you're not a leader. It would enhance that narrative again. Now, the Lakers, I think that getting D'Angelo Russell would be not that great for them. I don't think it would be like like the end of the world like it would be with you know the Nets getting Kyrie Irving. But I think it wouldn't be great. You want to get someone that's not an isolation scorer who needs the ball in his hands to score every single time. Unless that superstar is someone like a Ky- uh, a Kawhi Leonard or a Kevin Durant. But we know it's not going to be Kevin Durant because he's not going to go to the Lakers. And I, and I think that they can spend their money a bit better. I, I just think they can. Yeah, they might miss out on Kemba, but they, but they can still go after Kyrie. They can still go after Kyrie. They can still go after Kawhi Leonard. They can still build up that bench. Because really, they only have three players on their roster, really. LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Kyle Kuzma. you got to build that roster. You can't just fill it up with a bunch of guys on minimums. And I think ultimately, for the Lakers, you know how in movies, how usually when there's no bridge there, there's usually some sort of vine or rope that people can swing across. But it's usually... But it's usually super risky because it's on like some sort of like really rickety branch. It's about to fall off. Yeah. The Lakers bridge with the Angelo Russell has already been burned to the ground. It's already fell. Uh, it's already fell off the cliff. Don't risk swinging across the rope or vine on that rickety branch just for him. Don't risk it. And same with D'Angelo Russell. Don't return to the team that threw you away like trash. Who didn't give you a second chance. Don't come back to that team. Come back to the team in the Nets that took a chance on you, trusted you, and believed in you. You don't run back to those who, who hurt you. If anything... You show them up. You come back and say, hey, you made a mistake. You don't come running back to them. Not at all. Now, for the Lakers, if they do get D'Angelo Russell, the one pro I can think of is that it's more of a safety uh, sort of cushion when LeBron James inevitably retires or if he gets injured or something like that where where he no longer plays. It's a good pairing of him and Anthony Davis on paper. Of D'Angelo Russell and Anthony Davis on paper. It's a good pairing. And that's the one pro I can think of. But for both of these teams, I'm telling you, please don't do it. Don't do it. You're going to hurt yourselves and you're, and you're going to hurt these players. And if I'm these players, don't let this happen. Don't do this. It's going to hurt your own legacy. It's going to hurt these teams. All. I'm telling you. Thank you for listening to the G Truth. Be sure to like and subscribe if you are listening to this on YouTube, as well as follow this podcast on the podcast app of your choice and also the podcast app that you listen to the most. Also, be sure to share this podcast slash channel with your family and friends to help this channel grow as well as this podcast grow. It has been the G-Truth. This is your host, Giovanni Canales. Thank you for tuning in to the G-Truth, and peace out.